Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. But now I'm going to show you something. Go to 1 Corinthians. Let's see what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Uh -huh. yeah. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? So Mills, despite what we call ourselves, the Bible says that you are the temple of God. You understand that? Same thing for my brother right here. I see you got the, uh, the lighter right there. You smoke too? You smoke too? What about you, bro? You smoke as well? You smoke as well, all right? Okay. A lot of our people do. But the Bible says you are the temple of God, Mills, all right? Before you continue to smoke that cigarette, read on. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Right, go ahead. If any man defile uh -huh. the temple of God. It says, if any man defile the temple of God, meaning your body, right. how do we defile ourselves? Give me some ways. By taking it wrong knowledge. Okay, by taking it wrong knowledge, but on a, a physical, a physical aspect, a physical aspect, how do we do that? We eat every day at these processed foods. Man. Okay, okay. You know we brush our hair. What about that cigarette? What about that cigarette? Though? Okay, so now that you, do you agree, Mills? Do you agree that that's a form of the following yourself? Uh huh. We put on the cotton meal shirt that someone else processed for us, and we defiled ourselves when we already had the knowledge to make that out. There are plenty ways. There are plenty ways, right? But the way that we're dealing with right now is we're dealing with the cigarette. Absolutely. Now I'm gonna show you why. Leviticus 19:17. I'm gonna show you why, Mills, because it may seem like I'm attacking you, right? No, no, no. You're attacking the cigarette. Okay, I'm gonna show you. But I'm gonna show you what it is according to right. God, though. All right, because right. you're my brother, right? Uh, yes. You're my brother. That's my brother right there. I'm gonna show you what the Bible says. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Right. Right. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So God commands us not to hate our brothers, right? Yes, what, how do we do that? Read on. Thou shalt in any wise uh -huh. rebuke thy neighbor. Rebuke means to what, Mills? Say it again. Who just said that? Say it what? Say it again. Rebuke means to correct, right? So read it from the top again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So God says, if you don't hate your neighbor, you're going to rebuke him. That's how you show love to your brother. You're going to correct him. All right, read it. And not suffer sin upon him. And not allow him to sin. So what I'm showing you is that that's a sin according to God. You've been found in your temple. You understand? So if I love you as a brother, I'm going to tell you not to do it no more. Why? Because not only is it going to destroy you, but it's going to eventually destroy the rest of your people as well. Because right. your actions don't just, uh, it don't just affect you, it, it affect the rest of your people. You understand that? You got kids? You, how many kids you got? You got one. You got a son, daughter? You got a daughter, right? So think about it. When you smoke that cigarette, and it does defile you, right? Because what comes from cigarettes when you smoke them? It said on the package. It says it leads to death. It is possible. It leads to cancer, right? Now what will happen? Hold on, Mills. What will happen? Only thing resulting in death is sin, according to the Bible. Okay. Absolutely. Now is that sin or not? All sin. Okay. I'm gonna show you something. Deuteronomy 28 verse 61. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 61. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. 
that's how God will destroy you for disobeying that commandment. You understand that? Right. By destroying your temple. Amen. So now, it does lead to death. You're absolutely right. And what would that lead your daughter to? You understand? Without a father. You understand that? So now, like I said, hold on, Mills. I want you to understand. That's why your actions are important, not only for yourself, but for your people as well. You understand that? For your daughter, bro. Now, like I said, that's love according to the Bible. Now, my brother right here, you say you smoke too, right? Now, why do we smoke? Why do our people do that? What you think? Out. You're not sure? What you think, Mills? Because we do it for a reason. We sin in habit. Say it again? We sin by habit. We sin by habit, but why though? Why do we pick that cigarette up? My brother right here, what you think? Uh, stress. Say it again? Stress. It's stress, right? Okay. Go to Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 1, and then we're going to go to uh, Sarai 30 about uh, picking yourself in your own counsel. All right. So now I'm going to show you. So stress. Now, why are our people stressed out? What you think? Why are we stressed out? You stressed for a reason? Why are we stressed out? Uh huh. Okay. But why are we stressed though? Absolutely. Something is applying that pressure. What is it though? What is it? Okay. Oppression. Okay. What you got, my brother? You said life is pressure. Okay. So life is hard. That's what you're saying, right? Now, why is life is hard? why is life hard? My brother, right here, with the Bible. Why is life hard for us? Yes, sir. That's, that's, a good question. that's a good question, right? Good now, question. you ever wondered about that? You ever thought about why we are constantly being uh, in oppression? Because why our life is hard? Because we don't do what the most high told us to do. Say it again? We're still uh, going away from what God says. Before. Okay, you're absolutely right. Now, I'm going to show you something. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Bring it up. Surely oppression uh -huh. maketh the wise man mad. The Bible says oppression maketh the wise man mad. Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 1. All right? Oppression making their wise man mad. So like y'all said, we being oppressed, we in a hard situation, right? And we don't have no comfort. That's what the Bible says. So guess what we do? We look for our own way of getting out of this oppression. You understand? And that leads to what? Cigarettes. That leads to what? Going to the club, drinking, smoking. You understand? That's what we do to try to escape this reality. But God says there's only one way, and that's by keeping his commandments. You understand? Yes, right. I'm going to show you something. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1. Uh -huh. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Right, all the oppressions done under the sun, meaning across the earth, right? Freedom. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. Right, and the tears that are of such that are oppressed. Think about it. On the earth today, when we look at the status of the so-called blacks and Hispanics, are they at the top or bottom? Where we at? The bottom. We at the bottom, right? So our people are the ones that's being oppressed. We're the ones that's in a poor condition. We're the ones that's crying because we don't know why these things are happening, right? We don't. And they had no comforter. They had what? No comforter. And it says we don't have no comforter. That means that what? We try to find yeah. our own way to escape this reality. You understand? Right. To right. escape this oppression. Right. That's why our people smoke those cigarettes. You understand that? So now let's go to uh, Sirach chapter 30. So let's see what God says about that though. Because the way that you're doing it is all wrong, my brothers. You understand? I got a question. For the brothers out here, raise your hand if you used to smoke. Raise your hand. I'm going to show you that. These brothers did the same exact thing. We all tried to find our way out of this oppression. But we was doing it the wrong way, though. You understand that? Read that. Sirach, chapter 30, verse 21. No. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. God says don't give your mind over to heaviness. What's that? What's heaviness? You said it earlier. Start with an S. Stress, right? Or, or uh, depression. That's another name for it. Read on. Give not over thy mind to heaviness, uh -huh, go ahead. and afflict not thyself uh -huh. in thine own counsel. God says, don't afflict yourself in your own counsel. That means don't try to find your own way out of this oppression. What is that? That's talking about that cigarette. You understand? God says that's not how you get out of this oppression. You understand that, bro? Now, I'm going to show you how. Titus chapter 3, verse 3, because like I just stated, we did the same things, right? right. I'm going to show you. We're not perfect up here. All of these brothers around here, we all did the same things. But guess what we did, though? We changed our lives. You understand? Uh, that's, right. that's the difference. And we're showing y'all that y'all can do the same exact thing. Because a lot of people say, hey, man, it ain't going to happen overnight. It ain't going to happen overnight. But we was able to do it over a period of time. You understand right. that? Right. So we're showing you that it is possible. You understand that, Mills? All things are possible. All things are possible. Titus chapter 3 verse 3. Uh -huh. For we ourselves also uh -huh. were Besides sometimes foolish. So we were foolish at one time too. All right, go ahead. Disobedient. Right, go ahead. Deceived. Uh -huh. Serving diverse lusts. Serving diverse right. lusts. So now that's not the only thing. Right. Because smoking is just one of them. Right. A lot of us used to mess around from woman to woman to woman. Right. Right? right? We all did that, right? 
boyfriends, girlfriends, we all did it. So the Bible says that we were once sometimes foolish, all right? We don't. And serving diverse lusts. Serving diverse lusts are things that we like to do, right? We don't. And pleasures. And pleasures. Go Living ahead. in malice right. and envy. Right. Go ahead. Hateful uh -huh. and hating one another. We hated our own people, right. like I told you. When you afflict your own self, you hate your people. You understand right. that? Right. Because you don't love yourself. Right. The Bible says, how could you do good to others if you don't even love your own self? You understand? Right. Think right. about it. Why would you smoke cigarettes? You know that it's going to kill you eventually. Right. Would you love yourself? Does that make sense? No, that means you hate yourself. You understand? Read on. But after the kindness uh -huh. and love of God, our Savior. Now, this is the point, though. I want y'all to understand. It says we were once, once uh, sometimes foolish, right? right? But read that part again. But after that, uh -huh. the kindness and love of God, our Savior, uh -huh. toward man appeared. Uh -huh. But afterwards, the love of God appeared unto us. That's what we're showing you right now. This is the love of God right here. You understand that? Cool. Knowing that you're an Israelite, that's the love of God showing you how special you every single one of y'all are. The most high God says we comparable to fine gold. You understand that? That's the love of God. And that salvation is only for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's us. You understand that? That's why he said, he asked you earlier, what advantage have the Jew? We was only given, only us as a nation was given the laws and commandments of God. You understand that? That's what makes us special to God. Now, I want you to, where we at now? I want you to go to Sirach 17 verse 25 because sometimes, now I'm gonna ask you my brother, is smoking an easy thing to come off of, uh, come off of? Let's say if you've been doing it for 30 years, can you just stop doing it overnight like that? Can't, some people can. You said some people can, okay. Right, okay, but is it easy for everybody though? Not easy for everybody, all right. So we're gonna see what the Bible says about that too. All right, read what you got. Sirach chapter 17, verse 25. Right. Return unto the Lord. The Bible says return unto the Lord because eventually, over a process of time, we turn away from God, right? right. That's by breaking his laws, right? We don't. Return unto the Lord uh -huh. and forsake thy sins. It says, and forsake your sins. One of those sins is the in your temple. You understand? Right. That's how you forsake your sins, by stop doing it, not doing that anymore. I'm going to show you something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, one second, one second. I got the, the main point. How you doing, my brother? Right here with the camera. Come talk to me. Come talk to me. We family over here. All right? So now I want you to meet your brothers. This Mills right here. My brother right here with the, uh, the headband. What's, what's your name again? Say it again? This is my brother Lucky right here. What's your name again, brother? Say it again? Braswell. All right? What's your name, bro? We want to know who you are, too. Robert, man. My brother Robert. All right? I'm in a diet. These my brothers up here. All right? Now, I'm going to show you something what the Bible says. We're talking about smoking cigarettes right now. Now, my question is, is that an easy thing to come up, come off of if somebody's been doing it for years? Uh, it ain't it's not that easy, right? Absolutely. So read what you got again. Sirach chapter 17, verse 25. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Return unto the Lord right. and forsake thy sin. That says return and forsake or do away with your sins, right? Read on. Make thy prayer before his face. Now he says make your prayer before his face. But first, before you make your prayers before his face, he said you got to do what first? You got to forsake your sins first. That's, That's showing you that what? If you in the midst of sin, God ain't hearing your prayers. You understand? Right. Because a lot of people, they say, oh, I pray to God three times a day. Right. But God says, hey, if you in the midst of sin, I'm not hearing your prayers. You know? Now, how can we prove that? Actually, you know what? Let's stay where we at, then we're going to touch that. All right? We done. Right. Make thy prayer before his face. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And offend less. And do what? Offend less. The Bible says offend less. So that means that sometimes it takes a process to get off of those cigarettes. You understand right. that, Mills? Right. So we right there with you. I understand. Because like I said, you ain't the only one. We have brothers doing the same exact thing. Right. But over a process of time, if you smoke, how many times you smoke you day? How many times you think? You don't count, right? So let's say about five, six times a day, right? Let's say over a process of time. This week you might do it five times a day. Next week, how about you drop it down to three times a day? Then the week after that, let's say two times. All the way until you don't do it no more. You understand? That's when he says offend less. You understand that? All right, do that. Turn again to the Most High uh -huh, go ahead. and turn away from iniquity. It says turn again to God and turn away from iniquity. That's the only way that we can come to God. It's by turning away from iniquity. Now, my question, what is sin? I'm asking you, my brother, you got a Bible. What, what, what is sin? Transgression of the law, right? Now, so in order to know, go to Romans 7 and 7. In order to know that you're in the midst of sin, that means you got to know what? 
In order to, you said, sin is the breaking of God's laws, right? Right. So, in order to know that you're in the midst of sin, you got to know what? The laws. You got to know the laws that you're breaking, right? Yes, right? So, let's see what the Bible says. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Uh -huh. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Is the law sin? Right. God forbid. Right. Go Nay, I had not known sin, uh -huh. but by the law. So, Paul, he said, the only way that I knew that I was in the midst of sin is by the law. I had to know the laws that I was breaking, right? We don't. For I had not known lust, uh -huh. except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So he said he didn't even know that he was in the midst of lust unless the law said thou shalt not covet. That means that he was coveting after a woman. You understand that? That's what it was talking about. So now I'm going to show you. Are you, are you in the midst of sin? Yeah, you can. And it says thy neighbor's wife as well. It says thy neighbor's wife as well. Absolutely. So now, is that a woman? There we go. So now, hold on, hold on. Before we go on, are you in the Mississippi? No, I'm married. Okay. Are you in the Mississippi? Say it again. Okay. You say yeah. Are you in the Mississippi? All right. So remember, the only way you're gonna know is by the law, right? Go to First Corinthians 11 and 3 first. All right. I'm gonna show you something because you said no. You said you said yes, right? But you're not sure what law you're breaking, right? My brother right here said no as well. I'm gonna show you. Once again, this is love according to God, showing you that you are in the midst of sin. All right, read that. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. Right, go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. Right, go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. So you agree with that, right? Yes, Absolutely. So the head of the woman is the man. The head of the man is who, though? Christ, right? That's our head, right? Read the next verse. Every man praying or prophesying. What is that, my brother? Because you got the Bible. What, what, is, what does it mean? to be praying or prophesying. Revelation 1 and verse 3. Praying or prophesying. It says, every man that prayed or prophesied. What are we doing right now? Are we prophesying? All right, I'm going to prove that. I'm going to prove that because we're reading what? We're reading the Bible, right? Read that. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth uh -huh. and they that hear the words of this prophecy. The words of this prophecy. So when we're reading the Bible, the words of this prophecy, this right here, you're in the midst of prophecy. You understand that? Right. So now let's go back. How you doing, my brother? What's your name? Tim, my brother Tim right here, all right? These are your brothers right here. All right, now, this the Bible says when you're in the midst of prophecy, which we all are, the Bible coming out, what should you do now? Read First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Uh -huh. Every man praying or prophecy, uh -huh. having his head covered. When we're in the midst of prophecy, sign, and it says that you have your head covered, right? Go ahead. Dishonoreth his head. He said he dishonors his head. Who's the head of the man again? Christ, right? So the Bible says when the scriptures are coming out and you have your head covered with a beanie cap or a wave cap, the Bible says you're dishonoring Christ. You understand that? So that's a sin that you're in. Now, what you gonna do now though? That's the that's the question. What you gonna do now? So what should you do? Knowing that you're in the midst of that sin, you gotta do what? You got to remove that head covering. You understand that? That's being obedient to the laws of God. You understand that? That's what we're talking about. So now, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prophesying is the word of God. Now, you want me to back it up? Revelation 19 and 10. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Now, what is this Bible about? I'm going to show you. This is the Bible. The Bible is about Christ, right? It's speaking about Christ. Now, I'm going to show you what it's talking about and how we know that this prophecy. Read that. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Uh -huh. yeah. And I fell on his feet to worship him. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, uh -huh. See thou do it now. Right. I am thy fellow servant uh -huh. and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Right. The testimony of Christ. The Bible speaks about Christ. Christ said, I came in the volume of the book. Old Testament to the Old. A new, right? We don't. Worship God. Uh -huh. For the testimony of Jesus uh -huh. is the spirit of prophecy. It says the testimony of Jesus, the Bible is the spirit of prophecy so when we're speaking about this bible right, right. you're in the midst of prophecy you understand yeah, that does that right. make sense the testimony of jesus the testimony of jesus is the spirit, it's the spirit of prophecy, of prophecy. The word. what's the testimony of jesus the word. there we go right. are we reading the word the word is god are we reading the word right hold on are we reading the word I'm, that's my question he's reading right, right. so he's are you in the midst the of prophecy of are you in the midst of prophecy but he's not reading that we speak right 
Like Read what you got. You, First Corinthians chapter 14, say, verse 3. Say, 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 but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Oh, okay. That's all God requires is obedience. You understand that? So now, my brother, what you going to do? You believe in God? All praise to the Most High, bro. That's right. All praises. What you got? You ready to repent? You ready to change your ways? The Bible says remove the head covering, all right? Now, once again, it steps to repentance. We're going to let you, we're going to let it marinate, all right? So now, with that being said, what you got? So, Rock, what was that, um, officer? Where you at? 2433, all right? Just to prove it one more time. Now, the next step, right? Because what we're identifying is that we are in the midst of sin, but we got to know the laws of God first, all right? right? Read what you got. Sirach chapter 24, verse 33. Right Are we yet pour out doctrine as prophecy? It says doctrine as prophecy. What we're reading right here is the doctrine of God. You understand? And this is prophecy. So just to prove that point even more. Now, go to Numbers 15, verse 38. Yeah. All right, so this is for my brother right here. All right, because you said you wasn't in the midst of sin, right? You agree with that statement? Do you agree? Yeah, okay. Numbers 15, verse 38. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel. Now, once again, my brothers right here, I want y'all to look on this sign. We are the children of Israel according to the Bible. Now, yes, right. I want both of y'all to come up and I want y'all to tell me in a second who y'all are, what tribe y'all come from according to the Bible. And we're going to go all the way around. What tribe would you be from, my brother? Uh, tribe. tribe of Judah, right? What you got, bro? Judah? Okay, what's your father? <laughs> Say it again? So-called black man, right? So-called black man, African-American, what would he be called today? So-called black, your father? Your, 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 your biological father? You're not sure, okay, some of us don't, some of us don't. So we just gonna agree that you're an Israelite, all right? Because you bear witness with everything that came out, right? All right, you said you was a Moor, right? Which is a descendant of Israelites. So you're an Israelite regardless, all right? Don't even matter, what you got? You're from Judah, right? What you about, my brother? Judah as well. So now, let's read it again. He says, speak unto who? Speak unto the children of Israel. Right? From the Judites that I'm speaking to right now. Go ahead. And bid them. Right? That they make them fringes uh -huh. in the borders of their garments. He says, bid or command them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Now, I want y'all to look at y'all garments, and I want y'all to look over here as well. What you see, what's the difference? Y'all have fringes. We got fringes, right? Now, why do we have them on, though? For a reminder of the law. Now I want you to go back to the top again, though. Why, though? Read that. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them. What does bid mean? What is bid? B I D. All praises, brother, to the head covering now. All praise to the Most High. Get up, brother, hand. All praise to the Most High. Now, what does the word bid mean? B I D. Bid means to command. So that means that what? This is a what? This is a commandment. You understand? This is a law. We don't. And bid them uh -huh. that they make them fringes uh -huh. in the borders of their garments. Right, in the borders of their garments, meaning the edges, all right? We don't. Throughout yeah. their generation. So how long does that last? It says throughout our generations. Forever, Forever right? So if the children of Israel are on this planet, they should still be wearing those fringes. You understand right. that? We don't. And that they put upon the fringe uh -huh. of the borders a uh -huh. ribbon of blue. And all of these brothers got a ribbon of blue. You don't see purple. You don't see red. You don't see green. You see blue on it. You understand? Yeah. We don't. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh, why? that ye may look upon it, uh -huh. and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So why do we put the fringes on? Why do we do that? To remember all the commandments of God. You yes. understand? We don't. And do them. And what? And do them. So not only to remember, but we got to what? We got to do them as well. You understand? That's the key point. God is looking for us to do the commandments that he put in the Bible. You understand? That he gave to the children of Israel. So now, with that being said, now that you know, that's something that you got to start doing or applying. You understand that? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, 
These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.